Ooh, welcome back. Yes, what's its face is back, and I am not dead as it turns out. I know I took a bit of a break over October, but I'm super glad I did. It's important to take time to recharge, especially if you're me and you take on literally 800 projects at the same time. So this week I tackled a project I've been wanting to take on since I started doing digital art, a Wings of Fire poster. Originally I was going to add in characters from all the different arcs, but I spent a while trying different compositions and stuff and eventually the sheer magnitude of the project got to me and I decided to put it off until later. Who knows, maybe I'll just do some individual arc posters. In this video though, I want to mostly talk about character design and how my Wings of Fire art has evolved into what it is today. So there will be a little bit of a story involved since Wings of Fire and Wings of Fire art has been a big part of the past 5 years of my life. First on the list is Clay, and I don't know if you guys had realized it, but I hate drawing mud wings. They are the hardest for me because they are kind of the opposite of everything I imagine dragons to be. Because I imagine dragons to be long and elegant with lots of curves and arching necks and swinging tails. Yes, they can be burly or muscly, and scary as all get out, but they are scary and burly in a beautiful way, which is just another slap in the face as they're setting you on fire. But mud wings are low, wide, and anything but curvy. Plus, their scale design is hard, so on a piece like this where I've resolved to drawing the scales correctly, that makes it a nightmare. But over the past few months, and especially with all the mud wings in my Tribe Scout Stuck PMV video that I'm working on, I've gotten a lot of time practicing mud wings in, which I find both torturous and good for me. Go figure. Before I started doing digital art, and all the four years I did Wings of Fire traditional art, I can count the number of mudwings I drew. One. And it was the first Wings of Fire dragon I ever drew. No, I will not show you. I would die of shame. And anyways, it's what convinced me mudwings were definitely the hardest tribe for me. Anyways. Here, Clay's wings are spread out in remembrance of the first book when he tried to hide his friends from Scarlet. It's also sort of an extension of his personality, since he wants to protect his friends, his family, from whatever danger they face. Now a lot of people like to joke about Clay being dumb and only caring about food, and I won't argue that he is the sharpest tool in the shed, because he isn't. But he's very devoted to the dragons he loves, even when it means going into the arena when he knows Tsunami is a better fighter. Even when it means taking a dragon bite viper bite to protect Sunny. Clay is always on the lookout because he wants to keep his friends safe. So I have his wings out in front of everyone, keeping them from harm. It has nothing to do with the fact that I hate drawing talons. No sir, nothing at all. I also have him kind of rearing his head and neck back, as if he's jerking away from danger, while at the same time moving forward to protect his friends. His eyes are wide, and he looks partially scared and partially determined. Tsunami wants to protect her friends too, but her strategy is a little different. Notice Tsunami is stepping over Clay's wing, because try as he might, she doesn't want him protecting her. Tsunami can take on anyone, anywhere. And because I wanted to reflect this defensive warrior side of her personality, she's growling. Tsunami is also meant to be a sort of parallel to Sunny. Both of them have their wings up and talons reaching out. Having these designs kind of pair off, since I did it with Glory and Starflight 2, makes the whole piece kind of work better together. It also adds symmetry of a sort, and everything sort of flows smoother because of it. With Tsunami, I wanted every part of her to arch. Her neck, her limbs, her wings and horns. She's primed for a fight, drawing energy in to prepare to swing at her enemy. She's colored in bright, bright shades of blue because she's like a starburst of color in between Clay's warm browns and Starflight's simple black. Sea wings have always been the easiest for me to draw. Like 90% of my old art and my old sketchbook are just full of sea wings. Sea wings, sea wings, sea wings, sea wings, sea wings. I like their shapes and their colors and their habitats. When I first read about sea wings, I was like, oh yeah, they are my kind of dragons because my favorite tribe. Tsunami's like, she was my favorite character before I met Quibbly. She's, you know, basically me as a dragon, and sea wings are basically me as a dragon, so I like everything about them. So drawing them is easy and quick for me, and it feels a little bit like coming home, which is shown by the two dozen old sea wing OCs I have lying around. Glory is standing back with all of her weight behind her. Unlike Clay and Tsunami, who I envision facing enemies, I think of Glory facing all of her responsibilities. Leading her tribe, keeping them safe, leading two tribes before she's double digits for heaven's sakes. Her wings are thrown back and she's standing up straight, staring her duties in the face. She's not glaring or looking uncertain, but she's calm, cool, and collected. Gloria's going to face whatever her tribes, or Deathbringer, throws at her, and she's going to face it like the queen she is. As far as colors went, I pretty much followed her colors from the cover since that's how most people recognize her. I wanted Gloria to be really easy to identify. I've got a lot of love for Wayne Wing scale design, if not for their crazy colors. I also love their frills, which are really great for portraying emotion. 
actually have all kinds of fun with rain wings. I mean, you want to hear about curvy arching dragons with beautiful sweeping tails and long elegant necks? Rain wings have it made. Plus, they're a lot happier than the other tribes, so they can be drawn in a lot of fun poses like swinging from trees, napping in hammocks, or playing games. Glory is also, like Tsunami and Sunny, a parallel to Starflight. They're both kind of standing the same way, straight as a ramrod. If, uh, if you can stand straight as a ramrod with, with four legs. Granted, I kind of show Starflight cringing from his responsibilities more than meeting them head on, but, you know, I gotta keep it real. Speaking of Starflight, he was actually the hardest one for me to draw. Now, you don't see it, since it mostly happened during my concept sketching, which isn't in the video, thank the lord, but I redrew him twice and redrew his head three times. It was crazy. I'm honestly still not happy with how it turned out, but I kind of got exhausted and decided to just leave it. Now, I have Starflight standing in a way very similar to Glory. He's leaning back, standing straight, as if Marl's ear is two feet in front of him. His wings are way back, which in dragon body language, I interpret as being on edge or standing up straight. Starflight is looking down into his side, second-guessing his decisions. A lot of his character arc was Marl Seer trying to control him and his friends doubting him, so it was really important to me to include these things in his posture and expression. Starflight is worried because he's being told so many different things. Marl Seer wants him to control his friends. Tsunami is mad at him for trying to do that. He's getting ignored a lot. Sunny doesn't return his affections. He, his pushes toward Lister fail and then he's back to square one. All the princesses are useless and none of them are fit to be queen. Poor Starflight. Starflight is a Nightwing, which means it's a little bit harder for me to color him since I had to watch how dark my shades of black are. Remember, if I do all black, then I not only lose my details, but I also can't shade. So I had to be really careful to choose different shades of dark grayish blue, since I take Starflight's tint to be blue. Sunny is a little special, since I'm reflecting a special part of her personality. Usually people draw her looking adorable and half-witted, which is okay. Sunny is a bit naive and very extremely annoyingly optimistic, but her personality is a lot more than that. She's angry at her friends sometimes when they forget that she can be mature when the situation calls for it. She's also really frustrated when dragons won't let her do things just because they think she's too small or too naive or too silly. So Sunny is reaching out, halfway between helping someone and pulling her talons back. She looks undecided and kind of sad because she wants to help desperately but doesn't know if she can or if she should. Her wings are tucked in and she's kind of leaning in on herself, as if she's trying to protect herself by folding in. I gave her those special golden scales too, and I am super glad she's not just tan like those other sandwing princesses. It would look so weird to have this one little blob of tan down there below the three queens above. Also, I made her a little burlier than people usually have her. This is because she is, after all, a sand knight hybrid, and neither of those tribes are small in stature. So I like to be true to her heritage and draw her as she probably actually is. She's just a really small version of those tribes. I'm pretty much in love with how Sunny turned out. Burn is large, burly, and snarling. I added a little ring of red around her pupil, but since her eye is so small already, you really can't see it. She and all her sisters have traditional sandwing color patterns. I also added a few scars in for flavor. I had a little trouble getting the colors right on them, but oh well. I have been trying valiantly to master the scrunchy snout snarl thing dragon snouts do when dragons are growling. I think I got a little bit closer with this piece since all the sisters have it. So I got to practice it a lot. <laughs> Even Blaze has it though all she's doing is really feeling sorry for herself. Burn is staring down her snout at someone or something that absolutely infuriates her, infiltrating the mask of bored cruelty. Maybe her sisters. Blister has a palette that's just barely lighter than Burns. She too has the scrunchy snout element, though she's only showing a few of her teeth. But that calm, slightly annoyed glance promises more than swift, brutal retaliation. It promises a well-planned counter-strike designed to shake you to your core. I haven't quite settled on designs for any of the three sisters yet, which is why if you look at different drawings of Blister, the black diamonds on her neck tend to change. This time I also added three small diamonds under her left eye. I'm not sure how I feel about that outcome yet, so I'll see about it in future designs. Another thing you might notice is how I've recently started giving Sandwings dark eyes instead of white eyes. But with this poster, I didn't like that, so I left it out. I know, inconsistent, but eh. I just wanted all the eyes to match because otherwise it looks kind of weird. And if I had to give the three sisters the black eyes, which I would have done for them, I would have had to give Sunny the black eyes and 
I just, I don't think Sunny would have that. And so I could have kind of relied on her Nightwing heritage to like say, oh, but she doesn't have them. Only I also kind of fed canon that Nightwings have that black stuff around their eyes. So, oh well, I'll just live with being inconsistent. Now, Blaze is often drawn very thin and delicate. I actually don't like having such huge inner tribe variations on size, build, and design yet, so she's built the same way her sisters are, just smaller and not as muscular. She also has a lot of jewelry, which I almost forgot to add but managed to remember. I tried to make Blaze look scared and angry because she feels like her sisters are being unfair, but I don't know if that expression really does that. Her colors are the lightest of all, and her eye is very... Uh, eyelashy? I usually don't give dragons that many eyelashes, or eyebrows at all for that matter, but I wanted to help portray her character. Oh well. And now, having spent much, much more time than I anticipated on the characters, I'm going to end here. The next episode will be part two, and you can see the background shading and lighting come into play. I really enjoyed working on this, even though it was exhausting and time-consuming and crazy, and I'm not too inclined to do any more like it in the near future. This piece isn't on Redbubble yet in its finished form, but I like the Dragonet so much that they're on Redbubble just by themselves, so you can check that out by following the link in the description. Thank you so much for watching, and I hope you all have a wonderful next two weeks.